Hello everybody, this is Ben Hansen with Benmax. When I was playing games this year, I couldn't help but notice a weird trend. Why are there so many museums? This year when real museums are struggling so much, I wonder what museum experts think of their popularity in gaming and what they notice that the rest of us wouldn't. Luckily for you, there's just a Zoom call away. My name is Margaret Weidekamp. I'm the chair and a curator in the space history department at the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum. I'm Cynthia Jones. I'm the general manager of innovation experiences for the Henry Ford. Do you want to look at some other video game museums with me? Yeah. Ah, we have entered a great man of history hall. Okay, okay, this is like everything I try to avoid doing about Henry Ford. So the gold tone on that statue, the, the, how they were having to look up at it at such an extreme angle. I think one of the things we've definitely learned about history is literally don't put people on a pedestal. So there's always this huge debate, do you show weapons or do you not show weapons and things? So the giant golden gun is fascinating there. Oh, this is awesome. So this is like every brand home experience. My company is so amazing. What we find is that people don't want to be run through a little rabbit warren, you know, where they have to start at one and go to the next and go to the next. They like the options of kind of seeing something across the room and saying, ooh and you know making a beeline to that and so everything needs to be able to stand on its own to be able to be experienced individually but also build a story in each of the pieces it sounds a lot like video game design honestly yes i think in some ways that's a pretty statement carpet right there you know your pathway there's an interesting lack of um labels no trash cans no bathrooms in almost every museum, they never thought about the trash can. They're standing in front of like this beautiful piece of art or in front of this most incredible historic thing. You know, it's fascinating. And it's to me, it's one of those tiny details as a museum geek that I look for because I know whether they thought about me. My name is Kevin Ramler. I am uh, the interim director at the Wyoming State Museum. Have you ever heard of The Last of Us? I don't think so. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Wyoming Museum of Science and History? Science and History, no. Does no. not exist. Does not exist as far as I know. I mean, I wish we had a giant dinosaur like that outside. That would be pretty cool. I always like a, a nice booklet at the beginning. The brochures are something that have definitely gone the way of the past in the pandemic. Is this what your museum looks like? Fewer plants on the inside, uh, <laughs> but actually not doesn't look quite as spacious as this. I love the gift shop. Oh, the Moldorama! Nice! Okay, this is kind of awesome. <laughs> I feel like I've been to this museum. It looks cool, you know? I mean, it, it actually does look a lot like you might expect a museum to lay things out. Although I will point out that the skylights are a bad idea. So natural light is really damaging for objects. This is a nice use of scale. Um, to be able to have a second floor overlook, to be able to see things from more than one perspective. Given a flat surface, visitors will throw things on it. A hat at least won't physically damage the artifact. Okay, you know what's gonna be the capper on this one is if they have an IMAX theater. I hate to break it to you, they don't have an IMAX theater. Uh, every good natural history museum has an IMAX. Ooh, okay. Wow, dinosaurs to rockets, that's a leap. So this uh, large contraption over their heads is called an orrery. I think that one of the things that you always notice when you put um, scale models of rockets up is what a monster the Saturn V was. Okay. Ooh. So that's an uh, Apollo lunar rover that one should not sit in. Uh, <sighs> um. <laughs> oh, are they gonna fire it up and get to drive away? Yep, that's how the game ends. They take the lunar rover into the sunset. So I am horrified at the condition of the command module. Again, we usually don't let people um, touch the hatch, but I love the detail in the um, design of this. And um, somebody has spent some real time studying a um, Apollo command module, even the hist historic artifact of a cassette player. Um, which we know that actually uh, the Apollo astronauts had cassette players with them so that they could take notes, that they could dictate notes. And um, one of the first things that they did then, of course, is make their own mixtapes uh, so that they would also be able to use the, the player 
on their own cassettes as uh, a player to have a little bit of music in the command module. That's perfect. When we go to space, we take our culture with us. In the era of the um, escape room, mm. like I think we've all started thinking about different techniques of how to get people to pay attention to information or to discover, more importantly, to discover information. So I kind of liked the graffiti and the flashlight effect there. So what was the last game? Uh, it's called The Last of Us Part Two. Ah, okay. I'd imagine nobody working at a museum ever falls asleep. Mm, hopefully not. I like how they've used a floor treatment. Mm. It looks like that they're playing with the idea of uh, the family tree of the various uh, dinosaurs. What we wouldn't want to do is, you know, take dinosaurs from, say, the Jurassic period and put them right next to dinosaurs from the Cretaceous because, mm. you know, like the T-Rex and the Stegosaurus lived further apart in time than we live from the T-Rex. Now, we would never let you walk directly under specimens. Even I'm going to reach a hand up and try to tap it on the rib cage. So um, <laughs> that's just a bad idea. Oh, I love this, that you can uh, zoom in on it and get a little bit more information. Putting things on a label is incredibly challenging. And then those kind of digested things where you really only get to have a word or two words or stuff is very challenging to try to figure out exactly how to have enough detail without making it too long. If you ever need any help, you could tap the writers at Nintendo. The folks at the Treehouse are very talented. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is neat. I actually love this view perspective. How would I get a guest to this perspective? <laughs> we almost never let visitors jump on the wings of <laughs> uh, the spacecraft. Wow, this is gorgeous. So you've got a lunar module that is above the lunar rover there, and that's very much based on the design of the lunar module, the LEM, that was created by Grumman for the Apollo program. And then kind of a riffing on that uh, architecture by Oscorp. In the age of COVID, one of the things we're asking ourselves is, what are people going to want to touch and what are they going to not want to touch after this? Oh, this is fun. This is interesting. I like this. Now, unfortunately, I believe Spider-Man is actually stealing that. That is definitely frowned upon in the museum world. You're not supposed to steal exhibitry. Um, we really don't like that at all. Okay, this one looks like the museum that's trying too hard to be, like, too techy. But if you notice on the left... Trash cans! <laughs> I think it was really fun. They all felt kind of like where museums have been and maybe not where museums are going. 2020 has really been a challenging year. It's been rough. The American Alliance for Museums, which is a trade organization that represents museums, says that, that up to a third of all the museums in the U.S. could end up shutting down permanently. And so it was a really fascinating year to really get back to what is our value? Smaller museums are certainly struggling, I think, to the extent that they have gift certificates for their shops or any other way that you can um, donate at the end of the year. You know, the best way to help a local museum is to engage with a local museum. You can do that with dollars if you've got it. You know, fundraising is huge for us. We're all nonprofits. We're all struggling. If you don't have that, get online, make a recommendation, share their content. If it's safe for you to do so, go for a visit. If you really want to get involved, kind of, there's a lot of options at museums through volunteering, um, through kind of board duty supports, and just advocacy with your local community leaders to kind of tell them that you think what this museum's doing is important. We can say that as much as we want, but when it's coming from the people in the community who actually use the museum and enjoy going to the museum, it means a lot more for local leaders. So everybody think about and find a way to support your local museum, or you can check out links below for ways to support Kevin, Margaret, and Cynthia's museums. And if you're looking for a fun discussion about these four games, you can check out MinMax's Game Club series called The Deepest Dive. They're incredibly fun and incredibly thorough. We actually covered all four that were featured in the video. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better. The Deepest Dive is the best, most thorough discussions about games on the internet. Prove us wrong, please. The MinMax Show podcast airs every Thursday. Patreon supporters vote on what we stream every single week and a whole lot more. Give us a shot, try subscribing to the YouTube channel, and we hope we can win you over.